Author and nutritional anthropologist Jeff Bond brings clarity to the conflicting nutritional messages that bombarded us all. He reveals vital hints and tips that can be used immediately to improve health and longevity. Jeff speaks to corporations worldwide. His cutting-edge techniques provide essential cost-saving benefits. Passion, authority, charm, and presence best sum up this international speaker. Now let's join Jeff Bond as he shares the secrets that will make your audience sit up and listen. How many of you feel confused by all the conflicting messages that are coming at us about how we should be eating? Put your hands up. Yeah, all of you, of course, and it's normal. Well, what you will hear today will bring clarity to that confusion. It'll give you the tools to judge which messages you can listen to. Now, I'm going to give you an overview of the full program. And I'll deal with three main points. Point one, confusion. How is it that we're living in this confusing and dysfunctional food environment? Point two, the root map. A whole new way of thinking about what it means to be a human being in nutritional terms. And point three, the fix. How do we navigate through today's world such as to achieve the ideal feeding pattern for human beings. So, starting with point one, confusion, some of you will have seen that TV commercial, a New York cab driver, driving along, suddenly, ah, oh, ah, oh, gee, it must have been that pastrami sandwich, he gasps. What does he do? He opens the glove compartment and there, ready waiting, is a bottle of pills. It doesn't even occur to him to stop eating pastrami sandwiches. And that's what we're doing today. We're switching off the alarm bells and not dealing with the underlying emergency. But worse than that, we've been indoctrinated from the earliest age by our friends, by our family, by our schools, but most of all by the massive propaganda of a money-driven food industry that sells us food like it was soap powder. And they use the same manipulative techniques. For example, the Japanese live longer than Americans, yet they smoke a lot. The French live longer than Americans, yet they drink a lot. So what is it that Americans are doing wrong? It must be speaking English that's killing us. <laughs> well, it's a joke, of course, but it's making a serious point that junk argument like that is being used to sell us junk product. And you're on your own. Nobody's going to do this for you. You have to take responsibility. You have to take control. And it's urgent. Cancer, obesity, heart disease, osteoporosis. There's a whole range of diseases that are growing alarmingly. Which of our enemies needs to develop biological weapons when we're killing ourselves on our own food supply? <laughs> and don't fool yourselves. What you put in your mouth today is going to determine how long you live tomorrow. This leads me to point two, the root map. What does it mean to be a human being in nutritional terms? Now, a lot of what you'll hear today will surprise you but it will be a commonplace in 20 years' time. The good news is you don't have to wait 20 years. You can hear it right now. When you go to the zoo, you see signs in front of the cages saying, please don't feed the animals. Have you ever thought of that? You feed a giraffe on popcorn or a gorilla on hamburger and they get sick and die? Well, the zookeeper knows that there's a proper feeding pattern that is right for each species. And yet he goes home and he feeds his kids on anything. We now know that this is totally wrong, that there is indeed a specific feeding pattern that is right for the human species. But we need to go back to our origins to understand what it is. Now, remarkably, our DNA contains the complete history of the human race. We now know that everybody on this planet is descended from a group of people who lived in the savannas of East Africa just 2,000 generations ago. Of course, on the outside, we've changed a little bit since then, Asians, Caucasians, Africans, and so on. 
But underneath, we're still the same. These ideas are good for everyone. And after all, we are still tropical creatures. We still like to take our holidays in Hawaii rather than in Siberia. Have you ever wondered if you're naturally adapted to eating beans? Yeah, we love. They give us gas. And these gases, by the way, are greenhouse gases like methane. So by eating beans, you're contributing to global warming. OK, that's a humorous way of making a serious point again. There's a whole range of foods have entered the human diet in the last 2,000 generations that we continue to think of as being normal human food when in fact they're not, like beans. There's worse than beans, and there's better than beans. But what we're learning is that many of these foods are making us sick in many unsuspected ways. So a knowledge of who we are gives us the route map to where we should go. So this brings me to point three, the fix. How do we navigate in today's world such as we achieve the ideal feeding pattern for a human being? You see, our ancestors back then, they knew they were in a dangerous place. And they knew how to choose the right mushroom, which might be toxic, for example. They had the skills to survive in their jungle. Today, when we go shopping, we don't realize that we're setting off on a dangerous safari. Well, the insights that you get today will help you to navigate the dangers of the supermarket jungle. And I'll illustrate it with one example. Do you know that our DNA contains the ancient code for a particular oil profile that is right for human beings? Get it wrong, and we mess up our immune system. We depress things like bone building. We increase inflammation. We make a mess of our biochemistry. So imagine, you're in the supermarket. You're looking at the shelf which has got all the vegetable oils there, the cooking oils. Which one are you going to choose? To keep it simple, we'll assume there are just three. Corn oil, canola oil, and sunflower oil. They taste the same. They cost the same. They're all vegetable oils. They're all good aren't they? Wrong. Only one of those fits this ideal profile, and that's canola oil. You buy a bottle of canola oil today, take it home and throw out all the other oils you've got in the house, with the possible exception of olive oil. That's a kind of innocent bystander in this little battle. And you will immediately improve your chances of not getting cancer, not getting heart disease, not getting osteoporosis, not having arthritis, not having allergies, and a whole range of degenerative diseases that are really relatively new arrivals in human society. You know, it's always a magic moment when people come to me and say, you've changed my life. It's so good to know that with these insights, people are living longer and healthier. I'll leave for now with this thought. One day, Napoleon called his generals to him, and he said, I want you to arrange for all the roads of France to be lined with trees. And if you go to France now, you'll still see those trees. So that when our soldiers arrive at the front, they'll be fresh from having marched in the shade. Well, one of his generals said to him, but sire, that'll take 20 or 30 years. Napoleon said, well then, get on with it, man. We haven't got a moment to lose. We haven't got a moment to lose. Thank you very much.